it's another squad cast. It is. These things just fly by. It's another week and another squad cast. And I'm Grant Robertson. And I'm Christina Warren. And we have a viewer letter. It's amazing how this happens. They keep flooding into our mailbox. Let's see what this one has to say. Dear Squadcast, my mother tells me I have a face for radio. I've checked and unfortunately all the radio stations in my area want a real pro or a Dave FM operator. This podcasting thing might be my ticket to the big time. How can I start my own podcast? Sincerely, Pod Curious and Peoria. Well, Pod Curious and Peoria, we did a little research, figured this whole thing out for you. We got in touch with Amber Ray, the co-founder of the Georgia Podcast Network, and she's coming by to answer our questions and tell us how to become a podcaster and what it all means. This episode of the Squadcast. from many programs are being picked up by your radio all the time. You can select any one you wish by merely tuning in your set to receive the same number of vibrations as a particular station is broadcasting. Talking about podcasting, and we're joined by Amber Ray, uh, who was co-founder of the Georgia Podcast Network, mm -hmm. and whose blog can be found at beingamberray.com. Uh, hey, Amber, welcome to the show. Hey. Thanks. Welcome to the Squadcast. The yes. Squadcast. Um, so we, you know, we're, we got a letter from a viewer who wants to know if they can get into podcasting too. Um, what kinds of things uh, has podcasting done for you as far as socially building an audience or uh, creating communities around your podcast? Basically the podcast is just a big excuse um, for me and my boyfriend Rusty to meet a lot of interesting people, talk to interesting people about things that we think are cool and that probably we wouldn't be able to meet these people without an in, you know, to say, you know, we're with new media, so don't you want to do an interview? <laughs> um, so we've met a lot of people and um, it's just been a really fun experience and um, shattering once again the stereotype of the, the web geek, like hunched over their laptop, like not talking to people in the real world. That's great. So, and that's actually a big thing, I think, is that is you know getting away from that whole notion of this is what an internet user does. This is how someone you know someone who spends a lot of time online interacts. Um, that's what I do. I mean, I spend plenty of time hunched over my laptop. Unless right. I don't. <laughs> but but, it's, but it, there's a social aspect outside yes. um, that encompasses the two things together. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the Georgia Podcast Network is? Yeah, it is. Um, it has two main functions. Um, one is it's an aggregator of all the podcasts in Georgia. So um, we want to be like a one-stop shop kind of place where if you're looking for a podcast in Georgia about any topic, as long as the people doing it are in Georgia, it'll be listed on our site. Um, and so we also host podcasts. So in addition to aggregating podcasts that are hosted, you know, other people have their own hosting services and everything. Um, if you want to start a podcast but don't really know where to host it or you don't want to pay for Libsyn or something, um, you can host it on the Georgia Podcast Network. And we have about 13 programs that we host and then in the aggregate directory it's probably about 60 at this point. And what has, you know, I would imagine running a network like that has done a lot for your own podcasting efforts. We think one of the big strengths of social media is to really um, get people in touch with their local community and forge connections within their local community. I mean, I know the internet lets you make connections all over the world, but we think there's real power in um, building those connections locally because that's where you can have a lot of influence. That's, awesome. that's a good point. That's, that's a really good point. Good point. And uh, do you have any advice, like I mean, obviously you've started a podcast, you've started a podcasting network. Uh, you've been very, very active in the space. If you were getting into it again for the first time, are there any mistakes that you made along the way? Are there any things that you did that you would do differently? What would be your biggest piece of advice for somebody just starting out? I mean, I guess my biggest piece of advice would be don't stress out about it. Okay. Um, because when we started out, I mean, we wanted to be very professional and do everything right, which is good because I mean you don't want to go to the other extreme of just you know ah, I'll do whatever the hell I want. Who cares? It looks and sounds like crap, and nobody can hear it. You know, but 
it, not every little thing has to be perfect. I mean, you learn along the way, and we learn along the way, because I go back and listen to the sound on some of our first podcasts, it doesn't sound nearly as good as now, but it's just one of those things, like, you just have to accept that you'll make mistakes, you'll learn, and it's totally not a big deal. Your, your primary motivation, I think, should be to have fun with this. And so, we're on the air. Let's see how the broadcast gets from the studio to your home. Of course, you don't hear the real sounds over your home radio. What you hear is a translation of the sound. Sound travels in waves. The picture of a sound wave, if we could see it, would look very much like this. These sound waves, made by the musical instruments, travel in all directions at once. Some of them are hitting that microphone and being picked up by it. The microphone is simply an electrical ear, the ear of the broadcast listeners. It picks up sound waves and converts them into electrical current. Sky. So doing a podcast by yourself can be fun, but it's even more fun with more than one person. With Skype, you can digitally record your phone conversations with other people, making it perfect for a podcast. Audacity is a really useful multi-track audio editor for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, if you're listening to a podcast that's produced by an amateur, it's a good bet that it's probably produced using Audacity. GarageBand. Although Audacity is a great program that can be used on either Mac or Windows, GarageBand is a very Mac way to edit sound, including podcasts, and it's free. There's a lot of places to host your podcast. Most of them cost money. If you get serious about podcasting and you build a serious audience, you're going to need a lot of bandwidth to push out all those shows. Check out Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Libsyn charges you by the amount of data that you upload per month, not by the amount of data that's downloaded. So for a podcaster, it's a pretty sweet deal. Talk to you. So there are lots of places to host your podcast, but what's cool about TalkShoe is that you can have your listeners tune in live, contribute via chat, and even join in the podcast live as well. The radio wave is picked up by the aerial on your car and is carried into the radio set. This wave is still a combination of sound and carrier waves, and your radio set must separate them. This is done in a little device called the detector tube. You've seen one in your own radio. This detector cuts off the bottom part of the wave so that if we follow the top line of what's left, we have an audio current wave exactly like the one we made in the studio. Then the other tubes amplify this current. And as it reaches your loudspeaker, it moves the diaphragm back and forth and is translated into a very good likeness of the sounds you would hear in the studio. Can you believe that we're at the end of another show? At the end, it's, oh, it's always so sad when we get to the end. It really is. But I'm Christina Warren. And I'm Greg Robertson. Uh, send us your comments, questions, death threats, whatever. Squadcast at downloadsquad.com and we'll be sure to write you back. We promise.